Hello dear friends and dear students assalamu alaikum and welcome back to job lesson for you friends we are discussing about the skeletal system and we have covered about the bones of the lower limb we uh, have discussed about the uh, pelvic bone all the external features of that bone and then we discussed about the external features of femur then the tibia fibula and the foot bones we discussed about the calcaneus and the talus bone uh, now we are going to discuss as you can see on the screen we have the bones of the upper limb with us now i am starting a new series that is that uh, in which i will discuss about the bones of the upper limb what are the bones and what are their external features then inshallah in the next coming lectures we will have a very very uh, explained uh, uh, way to, uh, to to discuss about the muscles and the attachment of muscles to all these bones inshallah i will have separate lectures on all of them so friends uh, right now we are starting with the bones of the upper limb so first of all we uh, should know that our upper limb has certain regions our limb our limb has divided into different regions right what are those regions there are four regions in which our upper limb has been divided and what are those regions the first region is the shoulder region and you can see on the picture the person is holding the shoulder region right like this so this is your shoulder right now uh, your shoulder region has three sub regions and what are those regions so the first is this pectoral region right you can see here i have uh, made it the shoulder region is divided into three sub regions the pectoral region the axilla and the scapular region you can see here so the shoulder region has a pectoral region which is shown here if you uh, follow the pointer of the mouse so this is the pectoral region then there is axilla or axillary region so here beneath your brachium uh, medially you have uh, your axilla and then there is the scapular region you can see here we have shown it that these are the scapular region so first there is the shoulder region and the shoulder region is subdivided into three regions the pectoral region the axillary region or the axilla or and uh, the sub scapular region or um, sorry we have the scapular region done then the second region of our uh, upper limb is the arm so this is your arm which you hold in your hand sometimes right so you can see in the picture this is your arm or arm is also known as the brachium so this is your arm the second region then the third region is your forearm you can see here so from the elbow joint up to the wrist joint you have your arm i'm sorry forearm so this is your forearm you can see here then there is the hand region so your hand is uh, so from the wrist joint up to the tips of your fingers you have the arm right so this is your arm so from the wrist up to elbow this is your forearm and from the elbow up to the shoulder joint or up to the pect uh, pectoral girdle or shoulder girdle you have your uh, arm and then here you have your pectoral region so this is your axilla and, and behind there is your scapular region so your hand uh, your upper limb if you talk we can divide it into six regions and what are those the pectoral region the axillary region the sub the scapular region the arm region the forearm region and the hand region so these are the divisions of your upper limb you have to remember now let's go forward and uh, as you know we are discussing about the bones so here we have on the screen the bones of the upper limb so how many bones total you have in your upper limb my dear friends first you have a clavicle bone so this is the most superficial bone of your body this is the uh, clavicle bone which is mostly uh, subcutaneous you can touch it you can feel it very freely so this is your clavicle bone so there is one clavicle on each side right so we have just written here one but we have two uh, truly speaking we have two clavicle bones so one on the right side and one on the left side okay so there is a clavicle bone then there is a scapula right so behind your pectoral region you have here a, a, a blade shaped bone a flat bone uh, which is called your scapula we will have lecture on that bone also then there in your arm region you have the humerus bone right so this here is your humerus bone we will see the external features of these also then you have your radius and ulna these two bones combinedly make your 
four arms so in your four arm you have how many bones you have two bones the uh, ulna and the radius then there are eight carpals you have in your upper limb so here you have in your wrist joint you have about eight carpal bones and then there are metacarpal bones so there are five metacarpal bones and then there are 14 palanges bones or we call them palanex bones so we have in our fingers we have about 14 palanex bones so three in each uh, finger but here in your policies and this is we have only two uh, palinex bones so the proximal and distal and here we have proximal medial and distal so about three so three multiply by uh, four we get 12 and 13 and 14 so we have about 14 palanges or palinex bones now if you totally calculate them there are about 32 bones in one upper limb we have and 32 in this up other upper limb so a total of 64 bones we have only in our upper limbs what are those bones the clavicle the scapula the humerus the radius the ulna the carpals metacarpals and the palanges we have so these are about 32 bones in one upper limb we have now let us go in detail and study each bone one by one and all the parts and external features of these bones one by one so first we have the clavicle bone which i have in my hand here this is our clavicle bone right and what is clavicle bone my dear friends clavicle bone is the bone is the only bone in our body which is lying horizontally in your body all the other bones are lying obliquely or vertically in your body so only and only this uh, clavicle bone is the bone which is lying horizontally in your body like this in your uh, uh, thoracic region or above the thoracic region so look carefully what is its anatomical position so we know that clavicle bone is lying horizontally then about its side determination how do we determine either this bone is from the right uh, limb or from the left upper limb so for the side determination you have to keep some important points in your mind and inshallah if you right now if you're right now watching me here i will tell you how to determine this uh, uh, this uh, how to remember this bone for its side determination very very easily so what are those important points the first point is this bone has a two ends the, uh, la uh, the the lateral end and the medial end as you can see here if i keep my fingers right here this finger shows the lateral end and this finger shows the medial end so this bone has two ends the lateral end and the medial end right now this is the medial end and this is the lateral end you can see the big difference between the both of them the lateral end is a little bit flat but the medial end is not flat it's about a little bit rounded or we say quadrangular quadrangular means it has four angles as it has four surfaces i will discuss then these surfaces combined will make the four angles of it so we said this uh, medial end is a little bit quadrangular if you want to remember the sides the first important thing about it is that you have to remember that the lateral end is flat but the medial end is not flat it is quadrangular that's so simple look i have written there the lateral end is flat the medial end is quadrilateral or quadrangular we say quadrangular then the lateral one third is concave and the medial two third is convex that's so simple look carefully you can see here this end right is convex but this end you can see here concave if you keep it like this right you will see that this is the medial end right as i told you the medial end is quadrangular so this is the medial end so if you keep it in its anatomical position how do you determine either it is right or left what you will say you will keep the medial end the quadrangular angle uh, end should be kept medially right and uh, lateral to this quadrangular end you will see this convex part right so the convex part of the shaft should be kept anteriorly the convex part should be kept anteriorly and the lateral one-third is concave anteriorly 
you can see here this is the interior side this is its interior side so you see right now this is the interior one this is the medial one third which is convex anteriorly and this is the lateral one third which is concave anteriorly so you can recognize that this is right now in my hand the right clavicle bone that's so simple how the medial end is quadrangular the lateral end is flat done then the medial two-third of the shaft is convex anteriorly and the lateral one-third of the shaft is concave anteriorly anteriorly so if you hold it like this you will find this is a right clavicle bone now let's go for it clavicle means little key right it's a little key in Greek language so no problem okay now look here in the pictures I have shown you that the lateral end is a little bit flat you can see in this image right now here this is the lateral end of the bone it's a flat end and the medial end is quadrangular so you can see here this is not a flat this shows a little bit four angular region so we said this is quadrangular and then uh, about its medial one or lateral one third is concave and medial one th uh, medial two third is convex so you can recognize this is the right or the left bone that's so simple now about its external features what are the external features so we will divide this bone into three different sections the external features of the lateral end the external features of the medial end and then the external features of the shaft of this bone so let's go for it first of all we have the lateral end of this bone my dear friends as I told you that the lateral end is flat you can see here I have written it's flattened the next important point about it is that the lateral end is also known as the acromial end why because here we have our scapula bone this is our scapula right and uh, you know that this is the acromial process and this is the coracoid process so this bone will make a joint here it's like this right this okay this one will be there yeah it's like this so here it will make a joint with the acromion process of this bone it's like this right so we say this is the acromion process and this bone is making a joint towards it so we said this is the acromial end why because this end will make a joint with the acromion process of this clavic scapula bone so that's why we say the lateral end is also known as the acromial end it is a little bit flattened yes we know it's flattened and then we know that it has an acromial facet in it so here is the facet for the here is the joining part for what it is for the acromion process of the scapula bone right so this is the acromial end and this is the acromial facet now this end will make a joint which is called the acromioclavicular joint this is the acromion process this is the clavicle bone so they will make you they will unite and they will make the acromioclavicular joint which joint acromioclavicular joint there right okay so you can see here we have uh, the image also so the lateral end if you follow the pointer of the uh, mouse here this is the lateral end which is flattened and this flattened end is also known as the acromial end and it has a facet in it if you can see here this is the facet the, the blue a little bit bluish you can see the due to the cartilage on its surface so this is the and uh, this is the acromial facet and it will combine with the uh, acromion process of the uh, scapula and they will make the acromioclavicular joint so this these important points about the acromial end or the lateral end we haven't discussed about the shaft friends I will discuss about it right now then there is the medial end of this bone and this medial end is also known as the sternal bone why because here we have the sternal bone sternum bone and this end will make joint with the sternum bone that's why we say that th th it will make the joint with the manubrium of the sternum right there is a facet for it 
on the manubrium of the sternum that's why we say that this is the sternal end so this clavicle bone has two ends the acromial end and the sternal end okay and this uh, sternal end or the medial end is quadrangular you can see here it has about four angles so that's why we say that it's quadrangular and then it has a clavicular notch in it uh, so we say that there is a clavicular notch in it so here is a notch present we said this is the clavicular notch right so then these were about the lateral and the important points about the lateral and then the important points about the medial end of this bone so you can see here these are this is the medial end of this bone so this the, the medial end is also known as the sternal end it's about quadrangular and it has a clavicular notch in it so these were the important points about the medial end of this bone now we will discuss about the shaft of the bone in the next lecture